So, so ladies and gentlemen, we will now move in to, to fight to number grow. five. Couldn't agree more and it is brought to you by Off Tap Tappers. And introducing first, out of the red corner, Lisa the Savage Kiriakou. What? Well, gentlemen, psychosocial slipknot for the walkout music. That gets uh, the tick of approval from me. But uh, I tell you what. This young lady, the, the story behind this fight is fascinating. Lisa Kiriakou, one of the more experienced athletes on this card, as you may have already discussed, took this fight on 48 hours notice. Got the call, she lives down in Melbourne, got the call on Thursday. Joel said, hey, what are you doing on the weekend? I want to fly up here and uh, lock horns with Aaron Carter. And of course, the, the savage living up to the moniker and uh, Lisa takes the fight with no hesitation. One last point before I throw it to you, gents. I like this one. Lisa, unfortunately, couldn't make it for the official weigh-ins yesterday as she missed her early flight. So she actually weighed in on the baggage, uh, the baggage scales at Tullamarine Airport. So pretty, uh, pretty cool little wrinkle to this one as uh, she makes the walk with uh, just 48 hours notice. That's absolutely incredible. Now, Justin, I feel like you can attest to a little bit to taking fights on short notice. I mean, what's the mindset like when you enter the cage? Um, a definite, there's a definite sense of like there's no pressure on you. You're taking it at short notice. You don't have those. You haven't been going back and forth with yourself in your head for the last 10 weeks going, uh, what if this happens? What yeah. if that happens? You, you're coming in, you're going, you know what? I've just got to go in there and do what I do on a Saturday sparring session. I've got no pressure on me. So, you know, Lisa's obviously got that confidence about her and we're seeing that already. And it's introducing amazing, uh, her to be able to make weight. Out of the yeah. blue corner, Erin Carter. Um, when I was fighting, um, we would never have been able to make weight within 48 hours. So that's actually incredible in itself. She must stay very fit, well, very ready. This is slightly higher than what she usually fights at, gents. I should clarify, but um, nonetheless, she is someone who prides herself on uh, staying in the gym. Did make a comment to me earlier in the week though about uh, hoping this one doesn't go too far because she's not sure how the cardio will hold up but uh, Lisa's a, a pretty funny character and uh, you know self-deprecating at best sometimes so I can uh, I can be sure that she will be prepared for this uh, for this matchup as well as she could be and um, matching up against Erin who uh, I've watched spar actually I've, I've watched this by um, people like Lonnie um, and uh, she is very impressive with the striking yeah, a lot of hype surrounding this young lady. 25 fights across the boxing and Muay Thai arenas making her MMA debut here tonight. And uh, I tell you what, my man Ryan Dunstan, the chief cornerman there, head coach at Ignite Martial Arts, he has been uh, telling me about this young lady for quite some time now. And uh, the last time I heard uh, Ryan Dunstan talk like this about one of his students was when Dave Martinez first came on the scene. So he, uh, you know, when you get Ryan's tick of approval, it generally means that there's something there um, as far as talent is concerned. So very excited for this much anticipated debut. And obviously she has the confidence about us because we, we touched on the fact that Lisa took the fight at 48 hours notice, but you know, from Aaron's point of view, that's, a, that's an opponent change for her. But having that confidence behind you with someone like Ryan in your corner to just go, you know what, let's do it, let's make the fight, let's get in there and let me do what, I, what I've been training to do. So I'm excited to see the ladies put on a show and, and I expect fireworks. It really throws that game planning out the window though, doesn't it? So it's, it's... Without a doubt. I often nice. like to compare it to those old school rock and sock and robot toys where... <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, fight number five this evening will be contested at a catch weight of 63 kilos over three three minute rounds. And introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, she weighed in at 63.5 kilos and trains out of absolute MMA, holding an amateur record of four wins for three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lisa the Savage Kiriakou. And her opponent fighting out of the blue corner, she weighed in at 63.2 kilos and trains out of Ignite Martial Arts. A 25 fight boxing and Muay Thai veteran. Tonight, she makes her MMA debut. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Erin Carter. When the action begins, your referee in charge, Nakia Melody. And really, really solid fundamentals. Expect to see some really tidy striking. 
Well, if Lukes could kill, gents, I uh, tell you what, Aaron Carter means business here tonight. And uh, I think the game plans for both girls are, you know, probably what you'd expect. Lisa probably looking to try and test out the jiu-jitsu of uh, Aaron at some point in the fight as, uh, as she lands a nice right hand. And Very nice right hands from Lisa. And Aaron, I would assume, would want to keep things at range and utilize that, uh, that beautiful striking that she's known for. She has such a long jab. Yeah, we almost see a, a, a on paper a, a lapse in the um, experience for the you know between the striking and the grappling in, in, in favor of each lady. So we see Lisa here pushing her against the fence. We see her trying to you know, establish that dominance early. Nice turn, though. It's one of the great things about a tie boxing background is uh, all the time you spend doing standing clinch really pays off. Fantastic lead jab on display again there from Aaron Carter. Nice timing under it though, looking for the takedown from the Savage, so. Good head control. Very interesting here. Look, Lisa's got a, a sort of a knack for, for making these fights dirty and making them ugly, and that's kind of the uh, the style that you'd want to employ to take away from the uh, from the very polished striking style of Aaron Carter. So I think we're gonna see more of this from Lisa as the fight progresses. Good use of the knees from Aaron. Obviously, she has the confidence in taking the fight down and getting in that sort of jiu-jitsu engagement, you know, coming from absolute, having people like Craig Jones, Lachlan Giles involved in your grappling in some form, you know, that's going to make a difference. Some nice knees to the midsection there from Lisa Kiriakou. You kind of touched on it before, Daniel, like, she, she did mention that she was worried about her cardio, and this is how you beat that, the fight, like this, make it dirty, make it grimy make your opponent use their energy and, and you stay as fresh as a daisy. So body lock here for Lisa Kiriakou. And let's see if she can finish this takedown, perhaps looking for some sort of trip. I really like her head control and I really like her body lock. What a story this would be if Lisa Kiriakou could pull off a victory here on 48 hours notice, up a weight class. Erin doing the right thing. She has her whizzer. She's trying to keep her hips away. Good frame. She's listening to Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Dunstan, one of the uh, one of the sharpest minds in Australian MMA, perhaps one of our best kept secrets. He is an absolute technician when it comes to his coaching style, and uh, giving fantastic advice in the corner is always there for Aaron Carter. I'd like to see a bit more urgency from Aaron getting her back off the cage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad thing, no matter what's happening in the fight, if you've got your back to the fence, you are losing the fight. Exactly. Whilst, whilst Lisa is, is landing some strikes, the significance of those strikes, you know, hasn't added up as of yet. But like you said, having your back against the fence, it doesn't look good in the eyes of the judges. I think as you mentioned before, as the superior grappler, like grinding someone out who's a less experienced grappler, you can conserve energy, um, ride them with your weight and really wear them down. So, very interesting opening round, gents. How would that look on your scorecards? I'd have to score that in favour of Lisa, I think. Initially, the first few punches were significant on the feet, and then she, from there, she just kept Aaron against the fence. We saw Aaron reverse it briefly, but from there, it was like clockwork. She was just stuck against the fence with no sort of real answer for what Lisa's presenting at the moment. I think the most success I saw Aaron have was with the tie one, or the tie clinch, and some knees. Um, she was trying to use the tie clinch to shut down Lisa's grappling game. And that can be really successful, but she needed to probably do it in, in open space rather than against a fence. And we're now going to clear the corners out of there, get things moving here in fight number five of the evening. If you are joining us, welcome. Coastal Combat 8, COVID be damned. We are back and back in a big way. 13 fights on deck tonight, and uh, we've had some cracking finishes already. No uh, work done for the judges so far tonight, and uh, we'll see if that trend can continue here. Both girls seeming almost unfazed by that first round. Both sort of ready to go, ready to sort of just pick up where they left off. That was a really nice fake to rear hand. Some beautiful technical striking. Lisa looks in, in very good condition for someone that's just taken a fight on 48 hours notice. I think we're seeing Aaron make the adjustments that Ryan's asking her to when he was doing his corner work. She's, she's keeping it out of range. She's going to look to open up now, land, land the more significant strikes, and just pick, pick Lisa apart. I uh, was, was very impressed by that uh, fake kick to right hand. It was a really, really beautiful movement. I'd like to see Lisa 
set up that wrestling with a few more strikes before she changes her levels and shoots in like that. Beautiful lead leg high kick there from Aaron Carter. So Lisa Kiriku starting to take some heavy breaths here, but I tell you what, looks like she stung her a bit with that lead left hook. That uh, leg kick is going to take a toll if it keeps landing. I think we're definitely oh. seeing Aaron land more strikes, but it seems like when Lisa touches her, she definitely doesn't like it. Yeah, one thing that's always very apparent when you watch Lisa fight is that she always looks so strong compared to her opponents, and uh, in these clinch positions, she's really displaying that here tonight. Seven fight veteran here, Lisa Kiriakou, looking at making the transition to the professional ranks in 2021. Her plan was actually to uh, compete in a round about February uh, and make her pro debut, but when this opportunity arose on short notice, she decided to pull the trigger and uh, make the walk as an amateur one last time. Learning some really nice strikes on the fence in that dirty boxing Ooh, range. Ooh, big head kick Dude lands. just stuck into that, though. Ouch. And it's always difficult in a fight when naturally coming into a fight, you start feeling that bit of adversity, but not having the confidence of having that gas tank behind you could play a part as well. It, it certainly would for me. <laughs> I'd be so anxious. So She's some, got the thousand mile stare though. She's still in the game holding the center of the cage. Some big shots landed here in this second round from Aaron Carter. Lisa Kiriakou, largely unfazed though, still coming forward with, uh, with some serious aggression as she pushes up against the fence here. You can really see the experience coming into play. We see Lisa making the right adjustments, getting the fight back against the fence, doing what she had success with in the first round. And ultimately, this is where she wants to fight because she can't be, she can't sustain those, those kicks, those sharp punches that we're seeing from Aaron. Oh, nice! Beautiful Superman punch, punch to finish there from Aaron. Well, gentlemen, I'm only employed as the uh, the commentator and the announcer tonight, but it's one one on my scorecards. What do you think? I have to agree. I think Aaron made the right adjustments and, uh, and came back and, and won that round. So fun fight on offer here. A catch weight of 63 kilos due to the uh, last minute opponent switch up. And like you mentioned on the walkout there, gentlemen, uh, yeah, big, big props to Aaron Carter for taking this fight too on, on just a couple of days notice. I mean, you know, Lisa, and deservedly so, gets, uh, you know, gets a lot of recognition for what she's done. But Aaron as well, stepping up to the plate against someone with seven fights uh, in her debut on just two days' notice. Now that's, that's, a, that's a serious badass move as well. So it's big props impressive. to both ladies and uh, they've put on a fantastic fight so far. I'm very impressed by her striking. It's so slick. It's very slick. What do you think the keys to victory are? I think Lisa needs to get this fight to the mat in this round and try and grind out the entire round on top for her to um, get the victory. Agreed. I feel like this is where Aaron's gas tank is going to play a factor and now she's going to look to start upping up the tempo, you know, walking her down, landing those significant shots as we see there. I think she needs to go back to using that jab that she was using with success early on. Oh, big, oh, big punch. That hook lands from Lisa Kiriakou. Stumbles Aaron Carter back into the fence. I'd like to see Lisa break continue striking. Yeah, I feel like uh, that did actually rattle Aaron. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to get back to uh, that range I call Connor range, like where you're about a meter out, and uh, you've got better head movement than the person against with it back to the fence. And often it's it's the story when we see the striker um, sustain that adversity where they engage in the grappling, as we see here. We're not seeing Aaron trying to break away. We're seeing her trying to hold on, find her bearings a bit, and uh, clear the cobwebs after uh, sustaining what looked like a very significant strike from Lisa. I think that's part of the struggle to transition when you've got like a really strong background and one style. Um, to pick up most of the skills, you often spend a lot of your time training the skills that aren't your A game, you know, you're doing all of the stuff that you not um, haven't had the experience at yet. Um, and it, it's, it's really amazing to see her bringing that, um, bring it up to this level. Using that spool. He's seeing, in that tie clinch. We're seeing Aaron find more success with that right hand now. The head kick has been landing for her all night. I'd like to see a break and keep it, keep the center. 
even though neither lady is landing significant strikes in this clinch, I feel like in the judges' eyes, this plays into Lisa. Oh, Lisa just turned her back. There's a beautiful right hand from Erin. What a oh. back and forth war. <laughs> what Big a fight right hand from the ladies. Break two from Lisa Kiriakou. So Erin Carter turning up the heat here after some adversity earlier in the round. Jeez, gents, this is uh, really up for grabs here with just under a minute to go in the third and final. Oh, big right hand lands from Lisa Kiriakou. Aaron Carter starting to do some serious damage to that leg, though. I think we're going to see both ladies empty the gas tank here and go for the win. Yep. 30 seconds left in the fight. Lisa needs to th Lisa throw something back. Right now, Erin's just walking her down. I think Lisa needs a takedown, hey? A hundred percent. In the eyes of the judges, she needs to do something. Erin's doing enough right now to win this round. I agree. Ten seconds left. We almost need to see a takedown. Both ladies giving it everything right now. What a fight, gentlemen. What an amazing fight. Fantastic performance. On display from both sides there, Aaron Carter, Lisa Kiriakou go the full three rounds and really putting on a show for the uh, for the fans here at Coastal Combat Agents. We see some of the highlights. If you see Aaron here, she's finding major success with this head kick, landing it almost willingly throughout the fight. I was very impressed by Lisa's cage control. Her head position was was excellent, as you'd expect. She had some really short, sharp strikes that really seemed to rattle Aaron. For the first time, we're going to go to the judges, but uh, mm. on my scorecards, I'd have to give it to two rounds to one to Erin. Uh, I agree. I would, would be in the same, same boat. I feel like she made the adjustments and, and, and uh, landed the more significant strikes in the uh, second and third round. But props to Lisa, like we said, taking the fight at 48 hours notice, getting in there, showing you know that she's capable of fighting three rounds on two days notice and you know finding success and hurting Erin in, uh, in the early exchanges in the fight. So... Because although that was Erin's first fight, she's got such a, a, a breadth of kickboxing experience and yes. tieboxing experience. So it's not like it's her first fight. So it's very, very courageous and brave but of at Lisa. Of, at the end of the day, we don't know how the judges scored it. No. Nope. So let's wait and see. So ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges scored about 29 to 28 for your winner by unanimous decision. In the blue corner, Heron Carter. Sounds like the judges scored it the way we did. Aaron making the uh, transition to MMA and securing the W. I do expect to see some, some really amazing things out of that young lady. And so far, fight of the night in my eyes. I think it was really technical back and forth, hey? Both ladies uh, showed some success on the feet. Both ladies showed adjustments after you know those prompts from their corners and uh ultimately it was aaron that uh you know bit down on that mouthpiece and went to work and secured the w in that third round i think that's really what gave her the third round was she just increased her volume and made more commitment um and that's really seemed to pay off for her and as we see her now you know off to, over the daniel we see ryan dunson a very happy man in the corner so ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with our winner from fight number five, Aaron Carter. Fantastic performance in your MMA debut. Uh, for those of people that aren't aware, there is quite a backstory to how this fight came about. Of course, your original opponent pulled out due to injury on Thursday. Lisa stepping up to the plate on 48 hours notice to make the flight from Melbourne up to the Sunshine Coast and do battle with you here tonight. Was there any hesitation at all when Lisa's name got tabled to you, considering there's a significant experience advantage in her favor? No, not at all. I've been training so hard down at Ignite, so I knew I was more than ready, but yeah. Well, you certainly looked ready here tonight, and uh, of course you mentioned the team at Ignite, Ryan Dunstan, one of the sharpest minds in Australian MMA. What's it like having Ryan coaching you on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, it's so cool, man. I've only been training there like six months, and they're already like my family, so I love it so much, and yeah, it's my life. <laughs> Well, you got one of the biggest pops from the audience when you walked in that we've seen tonight. I'm sure there's a lot of people here you would like to thank. Yeah, obviously I want to thank Lisa for making the flight up. I really appreciate it. So, And I want to thank Joel for paying for all the flights and accommodation and everything. And my team at Ignite and my whole boxing family that came here tonight. And 
Yeah, and my dad. I love him so much. So. <laughs> well, congratulations. Go and enjoy it. a successful transition to the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Aaron Carter.